Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and right here, what you're looking at is a picture from back in 2010 that shows us the first ever confirmed Trojan of planet Earth. Now I'm going to explain to you what Trojans are in a few seconds, but what's important is that it looks like we found another one. There seem to be two Trojans that planet Earth has, and that is actually kind of fascinating. But like so many other amazing discoveries and amazing stories, this one actually once again starts on Twitter. The amazing amateur astronomer Tony Dunn has actually posted this beautiful picture you see right here that shows us the potential orbit of this incredible new discovery. Now, first of all, what exactly are Trojans and why is this even important? Like so many other unusual objects in the solar system, Trojans are a type of an asteroid. Although more specifically, they're known as minor planets. And if I were to select some of them right here, you would see there's actually quite a lot of them placed in the orbit of Jupiter, or essentially sharing the orbit with Jupiter. And if you ever want to see the total list of these over 9,000 objects, it's actually in the description below. There are quite a lot of them and they all have very different properties. But those are only the Jupiter's Trojans we've discovered so far. In reality, there are millions and millions of them and a lot of them are still hidden. And every planet has their own Trojans. The objects that essentially share the orbit of the planet by getting stuck in these relatively stable points known as Lagrange points. You may have heard of them before, you may have not. There are five of them in total, they're all relatively stable and you can actually take any object, place it there and it's not going to fall back to Earth and it's not going to fall back into the Sun. There's one point right here between the Sun and planet Earth, there's one behind planet Earth there's one on the opposite side to the Sun, and there's also L4, as well as L5, which are roughly around 60 degrees between the planet Earth and the point itself. And all of the Trojans we've found so far are basically in these L4 and L5 points. And by the way, we also use them for different satellites as well. It's very common to place a satellite that, for example, tries to study planet Earth or something away from planet Earth by placing it in these points. But because of the proximity of Saturn to Jupiter and essentially because of the planetary interactions and because Jupiter is really, really massive, so far we actually haven't discovered any Trojans around Saturn. We've discovered one around Uranus, there's I think 28 around Neptune, but Saturn seems to be lacking them. And it's not really because they're just not there, they're probably there or might actually be really small but no major ones have been found. And we believe this is really because of the gravitational interactions with Jupiter, meaning that Jupiter probably just stole all of them and now they are orbiting the other planet. But surprisingly, Mars has nine of them and you can once again learn more about them in the link in the description below. And that means that Earth has to have some too. Earth is more massive. It also has quite a lot of asteroids approaching it once in a while. So there have to be more Trojans hiding somewhere in there. This is what most scientists believe and this is what a lot of professional and amateur astronomers have been trying to discover for years now. But the only official confirmation was back in 2010 and since then nothing new has been found. Until of course now. And unfortunately other than the potential orbit that you see right here, we don't really know much else about this object. We know that it's obviously a relatively large asteroid, probably somewhat similar to the previously discovered Trojan, which is around uh, 300 meters in diameter or approximately 1000 feet. And just like the previous discovery, it also has an orbit that essentially is a little bit more complex than just staying in that one spot. And so instead of just being in the Lagrange point, it actually moves in a really wide arc, even going as far as the orbit of Venus. Although, wait, it's on the other side, it's in the L4 point, which is the point preceding the orbit of Earth. And as you can see in this simulation, it even almost reaches the orbit of Mars. And in that sense, it's actually a really interesting object. Because first of all, all of this means that eventually either Venus or Mars will destabilize this orbit and so the object will probably move away, possibly escaping somewhere else or even becoming a Trojan of either Mars or Venus. But at the same time, now I guess the question would be, how can it stably orbit there to begin with? Shouldn't Venus already have disrupted it? And well, remember, this is a two-dimensional image. In reality, this object also has a really high inclination, meaning that it goes below and above the solar system plane, thus never really coming too close to Venus or Mars. And this is also one of the main reasons why it's somewhat difficult to find these objects. They move across the night skies quite a lot and quite unpredictably. 
while at the same time they're usually in the location where the sun has a tendency to cover their presence. So it's very difficult to find these objects from planet Earth, and one of the best ways for us to try to find more of them would be to actually look at the orbit of planet Earth from another planet. Although obviously that's not something we can currently do just yet. And several other astronomers have already joined in and tried to simulate the stability of this object, and turns out it's going to be in this relatively stable orbit for at least a few thousand years. And this is of course as stable as it gets for most of the Trojans orbiting smaller planets. Only Trojans of Jupiter, for example, or possibly Neptune, would be able to stay in these orbits for much longer periods of time. So for example, the first ever discovered Trojan is expected to stay in this orbit for probably about maximum 18,000 years before it gets captured by something else or possibly collides with something. And one of the main reasons why these objects normally do not have stable orbits for over a few thousand years is actually because of the pressure from the Sun, not so much the pressure from Jupiter's gravity. In this case, we're talking about something known as the Yarkovsky effect. The effect that starts appearing in any asteroid or any smaller object that spins around while orbiting the Sun that basically is explained by one side of the object being warmed up and as it spins around, that one side that's now warm emitting the radiation that can actually act as a tiny tiny engine, kind of like a rocket engine, pushing the object away toward a certain direction. And this is a pretty powerful effect, especially for some of the medium-sized asteroids, to the point where sometimes we don't even know where a certain asteroid is going to be in the next few hundreds of years. There's actually a little bit more information about how this can be important for us and how it can actually lead to potentially dangerous collisions in one of the videos I made about the famous Apophis asteroid. The video is somewhere right there. But for the object, officially known as 2020 XL5, without an actual proper name just yet, it looks like the stability here is at least 4500 years. So definitely something that hypothetically at least we could one day explore. Although because these objects have such high inclination, or basically because their orbit is highly inclined to the rest of the solar system, it's somewhat difficult to get to them. For example, for this object right here, to try to reach this, you'd probably need just as much fuel as to reach Jupiter. So in that sense, even though they do share the orbit with planet Earth, because of their inclination, it is kind of difficult to get there. But in reality, once we find out how to find these objects more effectively, we could actually discover up to about a hundred of them. That's sort of the unofficial figure right now for how many we believe there should be out there orbiting in these L4, L5 Lagrange points. And before we forget, speaking of Trojans, NASA is officially launching a mission, the first ever mission to a Trojan in October of 2021. The mission known as Lucy. Obviously we're going to be talking more about this in one of the future videos, but this is something to be aware of and something to actually, I guess in some sense, get excited about. Although by the time that the mission arrives to that Trojan, all of us are going to be much, much older. About seven years older as a matter of fact. Anyway, so Trojans are definitely exciting, there's a lot of things we can learn about the solar system and other planets by studying them, but for now that's kind of all we know. It is definitely exciting to discover another one of these objects in the orbit of our own planet, and it will be very exciting to find out more about it and its origins in some of the future studies. For now that's all we know, check out all of the links and all of the relevant data in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support our channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.